So Sergei Kovalev wins the pointless rematch against Jean Pascal. Uh, Pascal's trainer, Freddie Roach, pulled him out at the end of the seventh round. It was a one-sided beating. Pascal was down from a jab in the first round. <laughs> Never a good sign. It wasn't called a knockdown, but it should have been called a knockdown. You know, going into this fight, John David Jackson, after watching Pascal's uh, last fight against Gonzalez, I believe the guy was called Gonzalez, the Cuban guy. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, John David Jackson said that he believed Pascal was a shot fighter. And watching this performance here from Pascal, I think John David Jackson was probably correct. And that's not to take away from Sergei Kovalev's performance because Kovalev proved in the first fight he was the better fighter than Pascal anyway. But Pascal had even less to offer in this rematch than he did in the first fight. He had less energy, less aggression, and part of that definitely was to do with the fact that his strategy was different this time around. And it had to be because the first time the strategy didn't work. And I kind of expected that with Freddie Roach, he would try and use more movement and punch on the counter more than he did first time round. But while he was waiting for those counters, Kovalev was able to touch him with absolute ease, with solid jabs to, to the head and body, right hands to the head and body. He was just able to catch him from long range without any problem at all. While Pascal was there waiting for the right opportunity to counter. And when he did counter, you know, Pascal landed a couple decent shots, nothing spectacular. But Kovalev wasn't even bothered in the slightest. And as I and other people have said, Pascal's not really a devastating puncher like that. He's got okay power, but nothing special. And once he started getting hit with shots here and there, after two or three rounds, you realized it was only a matter of time. And in fact, I think after two or three rounds, Kovalev actually started carrying John Pascal. And in fact, he confirmed that in a post-fight interview. He said he was carrying him. He wanted to prolong the beating and punish Pascal for the things he'd said before the fight. So yeah, I feel that Pascal looked terrible. Let's get, you know, let's not get it twisted. He looked absolutely terrible. As good as Kovalev looked, Pascal just looked terrible. He wasn't throwing anything back. I mean, many of, uh, in fact, <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go this far. Bernard Hopkins didn't look great against uh, Sergei Kovalev, but I think Pascal looked worse. <laughs> Even though Bernard Hopkins was 50-something and he didn't throw many punches, to me, he looked fresher, you know, by the halfway stage against Kovalev than John Pascal did. Pascal's been in a lot, a lot of tough fights, taken a lot of punishment throughout his career. And I know there are other fighters out there who may have taken more punishment than Pascal, but those are not normally guys who rely on reflexes and speed and athleticism the way that Pascal does. And when you rely on those type of things, I think that being in a lot of wars and taking a lot of punishment is going to hurt you more than if you're a pressure fighter. Because if you're a pressure fighter, you're not really relying on the athleticism and the speed and the reflexes and all that type of stuff. Uh, but being that kind of fighter that Jean Pascal is, it really has uh, blunted his his blade, so to speak. And he just really, psh, he looks sluggish, couldn't get any punches off. And that's normally the sign of a shot fighter when a guy just cannot get any punches off. And that's how Pascal looked. But he was pitiful, really. Pitiful, pitiful. Again, it was the rematch that, you know, nobody outside of Canada really wanted. Sergey Kovalev and Kafu Duva decided to take it because of the fact that Kovalev doesn't have a fan base in the United States. So he's having to take fights against other people who do have fan bases in order to get himself a decent payday. Uh, later on this year, uh, hopefully we'll see him against Andre Ward. Um, unfortunately, a fight against Adonis Stevenson was recently being negotiated, but that has fallen through yet again. And according to uh, Adonis Stevenson's promoter, Yvonne Michel, he says it's once again down to network problems. Because according to him, Showtime were willing to do a cross-network fight with HBO, whereby they would both screen the uh, Sergei Kovalev-Adonis Stevenson fight. 
And again, Von Michelle said that uh, Showtime were willing to do it. But when they proposed it to HBO, HBO said, no, we're not doing a cross network. Uh, Sergey Kovalev or Donna Stevenson fight. Again, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to that particular article below so you can go read it for yourselves. But regardless, whatever the case was, wh whatever the case may be, you know, the fight went on for seven rounds. Freddie Roach threatened to pull Pascal out a few times. Pascal begged him to let him continue. But all he, all Pascal did when he, you know, went out there for another round was just run around the ring and try and survive. That's all he did. He wasn't throwing any punches back. And eventually at the end of the seventh, Freddie Roach said, nah, that's it. End of. And he pulled Pascal out of the fight. Now, the post-fight interview was actually more interesting than the fight itself. The fight was really uneventful when it was just a sparring session, really, for Pas uh, for uh, Kovalev, who was just practicing his technique in there. That's all he was doing. He, was, he didn't make as many mistakes this time around. One, because he was more careful and he was you know, holding his shape better than he did first time around. And two, because Pascal wasn't throwing as much as he did in the first fight. Didn't have as much to offer. Uh, but anyway... The post-fight interview was more interesting than the actual fight itself because you had uh, Kovalev saying that he still don't like or respect Pascal, saying that he wanted to punish him, this, that, and the other. And then <laughs> he said he'd like to fight Adonis Chickenson, as he referred to him. And Stevenson seemed to get irate. Stevenson jumped in the ring. He got irate, you know, Tyson Fury style and said, I'm the real champion. I'm the real champion. And it all got a little bit WWE. And you know me, I'm a sucker for all those type of theatrics. I love all the WWE stuff. I loved it when Tyson Fury got in the ring and started uh, barking at Deontay Wilder. And I also enjoyed <laughs> Stevenson getting in the ring with his, you know, with his, his suit on and all that. Uh, I just wish they would fight. I wish they would get it somehow sorted out. The only way this fight's going to happen now, I, look, I understand the Stevenson team. They want this fight to either be a cross-network fight where Showtime and HBO both show it, or they want to go to a purse bid and let whichever network offers the most money show the fight. That's how the Stevenson team want to do it. Whereas the Kovalev team are like, no, we want it on HBO or nothing. We're not even willing to negotiate we're not willing to do no purse bid. We're not willing to uh, let the networks bid for the fight. None of that. It's either our way or the highway. That is uh, the Kovalev team's stance on a potential Stevenson fight, which is unfortunate. So, uh, I mean, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's one of those kind of things. From, from Team Stevenson's point of view, I can understand them wanting to get the maximum amount of money for the fight because it probably will be a cash out fight. I mean, how many people really think that Stevenson could beat Kovalev at this stage? I think he'll put up a better fight than Pascal did, definitely. I think stylistically, he's a more difficult fight for Kovalev than Pascal. But I certainly expect Kovalev to win that fight. How many of you don't expect Kovalev to beat Adonis Stevenson? So obviously, if Stevenson's going to take that fight, he wants to get the best deal possible. And to get the best deal possible, you're going to have to allow both networks to bid for the fight. And that's different than allowing uh, both promoters to bid for the fight. Because if the, if the two networks are bidding for the fight, then Kovalev can't be in breach of contract because he his promoter is not the one bidding for it. It'll be HBO and Showtime bidding for it. The same way that HBO and Showtime bid for Lucas Matisse against Ruslan Chigayev. Yeah, it's got nothing to do with the promoters. But again, Showtime are not willing to do it. And Adonis Stevenson's not willing to take less money to just do a straight deal and fight Kovalev on Showtime. So uh, it is what it is, man. It's unfortunate. Uh, I'd like to see Kovalev maybe fight Gonzalez, the guy that, uh, uh, the guy that Jean Pascal fought previously. I think the Gonzalez fight would be interesting. And Stevenson himself has got to fight someone. I think he's fighting Sullivan Barrera next. I think, I believe that's his mandatory current me if I'm wrong. So, you know, we we might see a, a couple interesting fights before the end of the year in the light heavyweight division. And hopefully, maybe late in a year or early next year, we'll see Kovalev against Andre Ward. So, or is it, hang on, is it, no, it's Ward that's fighting Barrera, isn't it? It's Ward, oh God, I'm, I, it's late, man, I'm tired. I can't remember who's fighting who. Stevenson's got a mandatory, and I believe that's against the Cuban. And Ward's also fighting a Cuban in his in next fight. So, God knows, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fill me in in the comment section, man. It's late. Let me know what you felt about this performance from Sergey Kovalev. 
Who do you think he's going to fight next? Oh, there's so much politics in the light heavyweight division. Um, what happened to Artur Baturbiev, man? And I thought Baturbiev was uh, Kovalev's mandatory. What happened to Baturbiev? I like Baturbiev. Where's he at? I want to see Baturbiev get in the mix. I want to see Baturbiev fight Stevenson. Baturbiev's with Al Heyman. So let's get Baturbiev fighting Stevenson. You know, if he's not going to fight Stevenson, get him fighting Kovalev. That's, he should be in the mix. I don't know where he is or what the hell's happened to him. <laughs> Someone put Baturbiev's face on a milk carton. And let's find this guy. Where is he? <laughs> Draw your comments in the comment section below, people. My thoughts are a bit scrambled at this hour, but yeah, let me know how you feel. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.